Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant surgeon working for the NHS in central London. And in this video, I want to talk about a pinhole perforation in your eardrum. Now I'll try and explain what that means. Uh, you've got the external ear, the tunnel going in, and that's all the external ear. When it hits the eardrum, which is just like a membrane going right across the ear canal, this three cell thick membrane, very thin, you can see right through it like a cling film, that can get torn or perforated. You end up with a hole through it. So you can see right through that perforation into what we would call the middle ear, which is the area where you pop your ears when you're on an aeroplane. So it's the area behind the eardrum. Now, in some situations, uh, most people get a 10, 20, sometimes you know, almost subtotal 90, 95% uh, perforation. So most of the eardrum has just disappeared and you have to fix that. And there are lots of different techniques and ways uh, us surgeons try and fix those big perforations. But there is such a thing as a pinhole perforation, a tiny little hole. And you think to yourself, well, that's easy. You know, that's going to take me <laughs> 10 minutes to, um, to fix in theatre. But I want to explain in this video is that I don't think that's the first thing you should do. This is another one of those videos where I think fixing that perforation is not the right thing to do. If you see a pinhole perforation, well, why hasn't it healed up? It doesn't make any sense. Now, sometimes it's because uh, it, the healing was happening because 98% of these perforations heal up within about three months. And you can see the whole thing is healed up except for the last little tiny bit of um, cells that just haven't met at the end. That makes sense. Um, and if the patient is having real problems with their perforation, particularly infections and things like that, then putting a little bit of cartilage or, or a bit of fascia behind that, uh, and I've got videos on how you fix um, perforations in, in some of my other videos, that seems relatively reasonable if they're getting lots of complications. It, uh, pinhole perforation or very small perforations often do not cause any hearing problems whatsoever. So these um, perforations are normally fixed because of infections, because if you have a, uh, if you go for a swim or something like that, uh, water goes into your ears, the dirty water goes through your ear canal into the middle ear where it, normally dirty water doesn't get to. You get lots of infections and all this stuff keeps pouring out and messing up your pillow and things like that. That's the reason to fix a perforation typically. But if you have a pinhole perforation, it's so small typically that water can't get through it. The meniscal layer prevents water from going through it. I mean, occasionally, if it's slightly larger, if you have soapy water, like if you're washing your hair, if you've got the, um, uh, if, you, if you're favoured enough to have lots of hair, then um, soapy water can sometimes go through uh, these small perforations. But it's quite hard to get water through a tiny pinhole. So what I'm trying to say is that maybe you should work out why you have a pinhole perforation in the first place. Because often it's just this tiny hole that seems open all the time. And if you look in there, it goes, oh, it's still infected now. I wonder why that's going on. The reason why you have a pinhole perforation in some cases is because there's a chronic infection behind the eardrum. So that, that little hole is acting like a vent to let all this pass out. Maybe because you station tube, uh, the, the, that's a tube that runs from your nose to your ears where you pop your ears and let air pass back and forth. Maybe that's blocked as well. But it's often because of an infection there that's letting this pus come out constantly. So it's not the hole that's causing the infection. It's something going on behind. You need to deal with the infection behind the eardrum first. Once that infection has gone, then either the the little perforation heals up by itself, or you can just scratch it. Typically, you can scratch it in clinic. You don't need to even use an anesthetic. Just give it a little scratch and it'll just heal up by itself. Um, now, typically in these situations, the infection is from uh, it's from the mastoid bone. Now, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm getting a little bit technical here. So you've got the ear canal here. This is the hole going into your ear here. And this bone here, you can feel the tip of that bone there. All of this bone here we would call the mastoid bone. The mastoid, this bone behind your ear, uh, isn't just like a, a solid bone at all. In fact, it looks like a, it's um, looks like a, a bird's bone. It's um, full of uh, little air sacs within it. It looks like a honeycomb appearance, um, like a little scaffolding in the inside. Now that's great because it reduces the weight of that. Um, of that bone, so it's not so heavy. Um, it's also, you know, just as reasonably strong. It, um, it's quite useful to have something that isn't quite so heavy. Um, now, the problem is that if you were to get an infection within 
the honeycomb here. It's very, very difficult to get rid of that infection. It sits in these little honeycombs and becomes very difficult for oral antibiotics, antibiotics through the vein, to get rid of that infection because it's sort of collected and stuck within these little pockets within the bone. Um, and it doesn't really matter how many antibiotics you take. Some cases, there's nothing you can do until you clear out all that honeycomb, including all the infection, get rid of the infection at the root cause and make sure it's all clear. Once you've come back to the patient in two or three months' time, you can see no more pus coming out of the ear and then you can be sure that there's no further information, uh, uh, infection, should I say, and inflammation and pus coming through that little hole. Often that little hole heals up by itself then. But occasionally you do need to say, look, actually, um, let's heal up this little hole. Uh, I'll give it a scratching clinic. If you really need to, we'll take you to theatre. It takes 10, 15 minutes to uh, put a bit of uh, tissue behind there and let the scaffolding heal over. I've got a video on that on my channel. So um, what I really like people to understand is that um, in the previous video I talked about not being able to pop your ears, that's important. You need to have a vent to let the fluid drain away normally. And you also need to get rid of infections as well, because otherwise you get these little pinhole perforations. There's no point fixing these perforations until you deal with the root cause first. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and I hope that's helpful for someone out there. Uh, do take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.